Now that we have two-factor authentication on our SSH for connecting to our DigitalOcean droplet, we can rest assured that we are secure. We, we know that nobody else can SSH in as us uh, unless they have you know, whatever second factor. And it's something we have. It's not something that we just know. So even if our password and username is compromised, uh, they can't get in. Um, but there's now just sort of like an annoyance issue. If I try to, to connect in, and let's do that here. So we're going to SSH in to this at, and let's go find the here. Um, oh, public denied. I have to tell it the identity file because it's not a standard name. So identity file. Okay, dot sage ID, I, the tutorial, connect in and ask us for the passphrase. Okay, so you're added in there and now I have to give it uh, the verification code. Let me grit that really quickly. Okay. Got that and I'm in. Okay, excellent. Oh, you know what would be really nice if I had a second connection too. is let's just go ahead and uh, we'll just do this same exact SSH command here. Okay, um, all right, you know what I have to do, I have to do this one again. So give it the identity file. So I have to give it the passphrase again. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, another verification code. So let me get that. And okay, I'm in here. Well, that was like, I mean, it feels too much. Like, I know it's not that very long, but if I have to open up like five windows or so, uh, that that just, it sucks. It's it's terrible. So let's um, let's let's figure out a better way. We want something where we can essentially have have a secure uh, two factor authentication, but also only have to enter in that two factor authentication once. The, you know, very similar to what we do with sudo. We want to with sudo connect in once and then uh, basically just be able to use sudo for like the next five minutes as long as we're not idle for a period of time. Okay, well, let's, um, how are we gonna do that? Well, there is a configuration file that we can set for SSH where we can essentially tell it to do exactly that. So let's head over into our .ssh directory. Now, bear in mind, this is not on the DigitalOcean side. All of this is gonna be connections on your personal computer side. So here I am in my Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, Ubuntu 18. So I'm going to cd into .ssh and here's all of my keys and everything else. I'm going to vim uh, config file. And so uh, the config file that I'm that I care about here is uh, we're going to do host. So like basically a host alias to like tell it, you know, this is the name of like what this connection is going to be. I'm going to call this tutorial VPS because that's the tutorial that I'm creating for you. You would name it whatever after like what this uh, DigitalOcean droplet is for. So for example, if it's like all of your blogs are being hosted on there, maybe you call it like blog VPS or just blogs. Okay, so then inside of there, uh, we need to tell it how to find it. So we have host name and let's go grab the IP address for this. And there we go. We have host name set up. And uh, we also need to tell it what the identity file is so it knows what that um, uh, what key to to always use. So identity file. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just do an LL of slash dot SSH uh, ID D tutorial okay so that's that's what i'm caring about so take you copy you and put you in there 
Um, notice that if I want to start from the home directory here, it is that tilde character. Uh, okay. Then here's where it gets a little bit interesting. We're going to use something called a control, uh, a control master. So control master, and I'm going to set this to auto. So what, what is control master? Uh, what this is basically saying is look for a special socket file that we're going to set up next. And if you can't find it, create it. But if you can find it, use that. And this socket is not really like a normal file. It represents a actual connection between this computer and the remote computer that we're connecting to. In this case, the DigitalOcean droplet. And that connection file is, uh, is actually like what is going to be used. It allows us to essentially piggyback and have one SSH connection, but multiple terminals coming through it. It's, it's really cool. It's called multiplexing. Okay, so we have the control master. Um, I can also set it to like other values too, but like auto I think is the best one here because it allows me to use this, reuse this tutorial VPS over and over again. If the socket doesn't exist, create it, otherwise use it. Um, okay, then we're gonna have our control path. Uh, and so this is, where is this socket going to exist? We have to uh, actually give it like the full file name that we want to create for it. So um, we're gonna do it in the same .sh folder. And then I'm gonna create a directory called sockets. And then inside of here, I want to create it. Now I could just say uh, sockets. But what if I want to actually have multiple hosts that I need to connect to? What if I end up uh, having like, I don't know, uh, 25 different uh, DigitalOcean droplets and I need to connect to them? Or even have like some on DigitalOcean, some on ABS, some elsewhere. And I just need to be able to like, you know, I, I want to be able to connect to them all separately. Well, we can basically use some special characters to uh, to basically dynamically give it a different name, sort of like variables um, or macros if you're you're familiar with Rust, uh, because they're going to expand to different values when when it runs. So um, let's go figure out what that is. So we're going to do ssh um, oh no, sorry man ssh config and open up the manual for that entire file. And so we're we're interested in this control path. So I'm going to search for control path. And uh, OK, so that's here's where it's it's telling me like, oh, that that's a control master. OK, so here's the control path somewhere around here, I believe, is what we're looking for. Um, now I happen to know one of the, I happen to know like what a bunch of the ones that I want to use are. Uh, sometimes you have to just sort of like search through it to find what you're looking for. Uh, let's see if I can find it just like the, the normal manual way really quickly. Here it is, tokens. So the tokens here are what expands out at runtime. And so you can see like, hey, if I use like uh, percent capital C, that's shorthand for just a bunch of this other stuff. Um, I don't really care about that. Uh, if I do like percent %d, it's, it's literally the, the local user's home directory. Like, I, I don't know if I really care about that. What I'm thinking about doing is, is mimicking what the actual SSH looks like. So I want the remote username. Uh, so in this case, it would be Brooks. And then I want, um, the at sign, uh, and then I want like the the host name. Um, in this case, is just going to be the the IP address, uh, and then um, the port that we're connecting to. And we can see that we have that. We have the remote username, so that's percent %r. Uh, percent %p is the remote port, and we have this percent %l. That's a local host name. I don't want that. Uh, I want dash. Uh, sorry, percent %h the remote host name. So let's go ahead and set that up. So inside of here, we're going to do percent, uh, what was it, R for remote host name. And then I'm going to do at. And I don't have to do anything special, just like as long as it's not like percent something, it's going to be, uh, it's going to just see what this is. So it's going to be 
uh, Brooks at, and then I want that uh, percent H for the remote host. Then I want colon, and then uh, percent P for the port. Okay, perfect. Um, and then finally, we have what? Um, how long do I want this connection to to be accepting new new host for? I could have it stay up indefinitely, but I kind of want to mimic what sudo does here. So if I do another connection for, let's say, 10 minutes. So in that case, we're going to do uh, control persist and then any kind of time. So I can even have this just be seconds, um, but I want 10 minutes. So I'm going to do 10 M for 10 minutes. And uh, that's everything that I have in my notes here. So we're going to go ahead and close this. We just need to remember the tutorial VPS part. So close that out. Now notice I don't have a sockets directory here yet. So we need to create that. So I'm going to do a maker sockets. There that is. And let's now create a connection over here in this window. So I'm going to do an SSH uh, and then that entire tutorial. I actually get tab autocomplete for this. Okay, so enter my passphrase. So let's enter that. Enter the, my verification code. Okay. Got that, and I'm in. And if I come back to here, I can now take a look at this sockets directory. And here is my connection. So it's my, my remote host name at the well, the remote IP address, the um, and then the port that it's on. Okay, awesome. Now, if I uh, if I try to SSH in again with that, so let's do SSH tutorial VPS. I'm in, just like that. I don't have to enter in my you know any of the other information. I don't even have to put in the uh, the two factor authentication anymore because I'm just reusing that same connection over again, that same socket. And so that way I can now connect in very rapidly, very easily. As long as I'm doing things within the 10 minutes, it's going to uh, keep on letting me me go in. Otherwise, it's going to sort of time out and force me to create another socket again. Now, if for some reason I, uh, I need to like just sort of like reset everything and, and make it so that uh, somebody else like can't use that socket and has to like re -log in again. If I just really need to do that, I can just delete that socket uh, file and I'll be I'll be fine uh, and I won't even disrupt my connections in. So here, let's uh, let's come back in to .ssh sockets. Here's this file. Let's remove that. I still have everything running here. Uh, everything's just fine. But if I try to connect in again, it's requiring me to put in all the, the information once again. So um, that basically is, is an example of how we can create these multiplex SSH HSH sessions uh, into our remote servers, but also not have to be bothered by our multi-factor authentication too, too often or basically as often as we want to. And for those timings, you can set it to be much longer. I personally like around 10 minutes, but you can you can set it for eternity, uh, 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 seconds, whatever you want it to be. Anyways, I'm hoping this is really helpful for your management and connection in. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.